been on fire the last month. 1,540 yards to lead the league in rushing. Size, speed, imposing. Henry, touchdown, Titans! What can he do? We want more. We want more. Throws it, jump pass in the end zone. Touchdown, Titans! Boom! Henry is going to threaten his own playoff rushing record. What's up? What's up? Because it has again been the Derrick Henry show. Oh man. What a ride it was. The Derrick Henry show. And joining us right now on Good Morning Football is the general manager of the Tennessee Titans, a friend of the program, yeah. John Robinson. Welcome to Good Morning Football. Nice. Yeah, thanks for thanks for having me, guys. Hope you guys are doing well. We're doing well. We're hanging in there. You guys did quite well this offseason. Titans fans went into this March and April wondering, are we going to get Henry and Tannehill back? Just Henry, no Tannehill. Tannehill, no Henry. Both guys are currently on the roster. How important was it to get Derrick Henry on that franchise tender and have him agree to come back and play on this thing? Yeah, I think anytime you can you can keep as many of your players on the team and keep consistency, especially uh, for us offensively. You know, really down the stretch there, uh, we try we, we really played good team football, really good offensive football. We're able to score points. Um, you know, things started to click. AJ Brown came along. Corey Davis made some plays for us. Uh, the guy behind you, Peter uh, Ferkser, made some plays for us. The line started to gel uh, and open up holes for Derek and, and protect Ryan. Uh, so getting those. Two back um, so that we can cons you know keep that consistency and move forward offensively was key for us. John, I think it's important you know that Schrager has been repping the Ferkser jersey for weeks now. It's not just that you're on. He does it no matter what show it is. As you know, John, we're an around-the-clock uh, year-long show. We do off-season shows. We have to fill segments, and we talk a lot about the value of running backs and the state of running backs. When you look at Derrick Henry, there's this idea these days that the long-term contracts are tough because the position is so demanding and they can be kind of a depreciating asset over the years. So how do you balance that? And what are your thoughts on that when it comes to Derek's future with the Titans? No, I've said it before. You know, we, we want Derek around there for, for a long time. Um, we're working on that. We continue to have back and forth uh, with his representation. Um, he's an important part of, of what we do. Um, you know, he's really good at running the football. He does an outstanding job. We hand it to him. Um, of finding those holes, attacking it, making yards that, that may not be there. Um, but but it's, it's, it's finding a common ground uh, for, for it, really any negotiation, uh, regardless of the position. Uh, you're trying to find some common ground there on, on what makes you know, best sense for the player and what makes best sense for the football team. Uh, but Derek's, you know, there's no doubt about it. He's, he's, an, he's an important part of, of our football team, and, and we want him there for a while. Yeah, speaking of important parts of the team, uh, Ryan Tannehill played amazing last year. I mean, he was he was as strong as the hair gel you got in that that do today, man. You're looking good, by the way. Um, but you know, how how crucial was it to keep Ryan Tannehill? Because I feel like he was one of the brightest stars of the NFL last season. It's Elmer's glue, by the way, Nate. You got to do what you got to do during quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, Ryan really, you know, once we kind of hand, handed the keys to him and, and, and told him, hey, we're, we're, you're going you're gonna to lead the football team, um, it, it started at practice. You could, you could see him taking charge of the offense. Um, guys were, were believing in him. They, they wanted him um, to, to, to do good when he was in there. And um, uh, he was an important part for us down the stretch there with the play-action game, um, getting us in and out of good plays. He was a great communicator. Um, our coaches had a ton of confidence in him, and it was important to, to have him uh, back and, and have him here for a long time as well. Love that, John. Thank you so much for joining the show. So I had a crazy teacher back in high school that um, I think was really lazy, too, and made us grade our own tests. Needless to say, I plastic psychology with flying colors, but I want you to sort of do the same right now. Obviously, you can make some more moves from now to the beginning of the season, but assess your offseason so far. We've got a little full screen here to show you some of the moves you made. You've talked about some of them with the guys so far. Give me a grade on what you've been able to do in the offseason. Yeah, there, there's there's two things that I'm not big fans of, okay, and that's power rankings and draft rates or or, or off season grades. Sorry, um, but but <laughs> well I tell done. you, I, I I really I really like um, uh, the core, the nucleus of our football team. Um, you know, we've got several guys back. We've added some guys. Dennis Kelly. You know, we lost Jack Conklin in free agency. That's the way it goes. 
Um, that's a competitive world, free agency. And um, those are the, the decisions that, that myself and, and Amy, our owner, um, and, and Mike have to make as who's going to be on the team and who's not going to be on the team. Um, but we feel like the free agent pieces that, that we were able to add, uh, meaning our own guys too, and then attacking the draft with Big Isaiah in the first round, Christian Fulton in the, in the second round, um, Evans in the third round uh, will be a nice change of pace guy uh, as a runner, um, Murchison as a, as a depth lineman, and those, those guys, Cole McDonald um, and Jackson there in the seventh round as developmental guys. Uh, really excited to see where these young guys can uh, can can go get you know take us uh, once we can get back on the field. John, you so don't A-plus. like draft grades, but I know you're a fan of history, and uh, I just love you to weigh in on some here. There's been some great streaks in sports. We've seen Joe DiMaggio 56 game hitting streak and Brett Favre 297 consecutive starts. And then there was the John Robinson seven straight days of eating steak at the Combine in Indianapolis and gaining a reported 14 pounds back when he was with another organization. So, John, could you reflect on that streak? And then also, how the hell are you doing in quarantine, man? Well, you you would you wouldn't know what to look at me, uh, Kyle, but I'm I'm a little beefy right now. Uh, I'm probably like most people. Um, no, no pun intended with your with your steak reference. Um, but I, I may or may not have 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 partaken in uh, seven days of straight steak when in Indianapolis. Um, you know, those are uh, for all of us, uh, those of us have been, that have been to Indianapolis for the combine. Um, it's a long, uh, grueling process. And uh, nothing like capping off the, the, the end of the day or sometimes, you know, 10 o'clock at night when you're out of interviews with a nice 16-ounce ribeye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. John, uh, we love having you on. You're a great dude, great general manager, but I think your best work is the work you do as a father. Um, you've taken such an investment into juvenile diabetes research. And I know recently you took part in a virtual gala. Of course, your daughter Taylor Taylor is such a superstar. We see her on social media and truly living her life. But John, Mm -hmm. tell us about the cause and how viewers at home can help and what it means to you. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's special to um, to us, obviously. Uh, Our oldest daughter Taylor was diagnosed um, a little over eight years ago with, with, with type one diabetes. Um, and there's no cure. There's been advancements in technology, which all of the funds that, that we've raised that, that you know, people have raised for, for JDRF have gone to this technology. And she now wears um, an artificial pancreas, which um, monitors her blood sugar and gives her insulin or stops giving her insulin based on the monitoring of what her blood sugar level is. None of that happens if we don't raise wow. uh, funds for research. Um, so she, she's, um, she's a trooper. Um, she also has um, rheumatoid arthritis, junior, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, and alopecia. If you couldn't see in the in the videos there, she she's a tough she's a mm. tough um, chica. Um, last summer, you know, she started to lose her hair as part of the um, you know the the um, autoimmune uh, issues that she has. She said, "Dad, let's just shave it off." And so we did that. But I mean, I, the biggest thing that's near and dear to heart is is JDRF and raising funds for that to try to find. Uh, a cure, you know, so that children don't have to to deal with a lot of the things that our Taylor had to go through. Mm. Mm. Well, thank you for all that you do for that cause, for your daughter. Schrager said it totally right. She is a superstar, and we love that you sort of let us into that experience with you. We are all cheering her on and sending you our very best. John Robinson, thank you so much for joining us. Stop by anytime. Just hop on the Zoom. Thank you, guys. Kyle, Kyle, eight days of steak next week at Indy for you. Make it happen. (laughs) Yeah, with garlic mashed.